let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for bringing us together in honor of the class of 2019, and in celebration as we embark on the next chapter in our life's journey. We gather in commemoration of scholars, athletes, and artists who comprise the graduating class. Thank you for blessing us with teachers who have guided each of us along this four-year journey. Thank you for our parents, ready to catch us every time we fall. And thank you, Lord, for walking beside us and granting us the strength needed to meet every challenge we have faced. Though we often look back on our journey, we also look forward as the class of 2019 travels miles apart. May we remain connected through our hearts, through our prayers, and through our home at Cathedral. After our success in high school, we must remember the words of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. Since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. May we remember to listen for God's call. For just as God has led us through our past, so too will the Lord walk with us through our future. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for the plain of America the Beautiful. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Rob Resch, Assistant Superintendent of the Office of Catholic Education from our Archdiocese of Indianapolis. Mr. Resch works for school administrators, providing leadership in personnel process through recruitment, selection, training, and professional development. He facilitates gatherings for administrators and teachers, including the Indiana Mentor Process and Training and the Annual Administrators Conference. He chairs the personnel team and serves the Catholic school team, providing direct services to school administrators. His many years of service speak for his dedication and devotion to the Catholic education. Now, with great honor, I present to you Mr. Rob Resch. for that warm introduction. Uh, what was left off was Cathedral High School, class of 1975. So, uh, uh, back in the days when uh, the uh, campus was located at 14th and Meridian, which is our offices now, is there any uh, folks that are in that 1970s era that were at downtown Cathedral? If you'd raise your hand there, any of my colleagues there, I see a few that are still living to tell about it. Good for you. Good for you. Thanks for that warm invitation. The entire uh, Catholic community of Central and Southern Indiana celebrates with you today the graduation of these Cathedral Fighting Irish. And to offer thanks to all the family members, educators, and friends of Cathedral who make the mission possible each and every day. The members of Cathedral Class of 2019 are actually members of a class of 1,478 graduates 
from 12 Catholic high schools in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. In a class of more than 130,000 graduates of Catholic high schools throughout the United States. In Luke's Gospel, we're reminded that to whom much is given, much shall be required. Look at the gifts that you've all been given. Take these gifts and talents and better yourselves and those around you. You are well prepared to take on the challenge that lie ahead. This is due greatly to the dedicated parishes and school leaders, faculty and staff members who aided in your formation and education daily. And through your own personal dedication, with the support and sacrifice of parents and other loved ones, we trust that you are well formed today with mind, body, and spirit. So on behalf of Archbishop Charles Thompson, Vice, Vice Vicar General, Monsignor Bill Stump, Chancellor Mickey Lentz, Superintendent Gina Fleming, and all of us at the Office of Catholic Schools, I wish every one of you, our graduates in the class of 2019, a huge congratulations and continued blessing as you strive not only for advanced learning in your career opportunities, but for heaven. Take your God-given talent and make a difference. So with great joy and gratitude and hope for your future, I congratulate you this day and assure you of our prayers and support in the many joys and adventures in your lives yet to come. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brash, and all of the uh, administrators, teachers, everyone at the Archdiocese of Indianapolis and the Education Office, we thank you all. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> my name is Dave Borland, and I serve as a principal at Cathedral, and at this time, it's my honor to introduce our 2019 salutatorians and valedictorians. I ask when I call the students' names that they stand and remain standing until everyone has been introduced. I would also introduce the parents and ask them to stand briefly when introduced, but they're welcome to sit back down when the next student is announced. I ask that all of us please hold your applause until each student has been introduced. Once all of our salutatorians and valedictorians are all standing, we will give them their unified applause that they deserve. So congratulations to the following graduates. Salutatorian, John Carlo Vincenzo Barker, son of Mr. and Mrs. Robert and Valentin Barker. Salutatorian, Matt Bigelow, son of Chris and the late Mike Bigelow, member of St. Louis de Montford Catholic Church. Salutatorian, Victoria Gallant, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Greg and Lori Gallant, member of St. Member of Holy Spirit of Guys Catholic Church. Salutatorian, Kristen Holman, daughter of Kevin and Beth Holman, member of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Catholic Church. Salutatorian Haley Lofton, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. John and Michelle Lofton, member of Holy Spirit of Geist Catholic Church. Valedictorian Sidney Cripps, daughter of David and Joy Cripps, member of St. Simon the Apostle Catholic Church. Valedictorian Sidney Hastings Smith, daughter of Jamie and Lisa Hastings Smith. Valedictorian Brendan Hurley, son of Mr. and Mrs. John and Maylene Hurley, member of St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Church. Valedictorian Samuel Cassius, son of Jim and Carol Cassius, member of Christ the King Catholic Church. Valedictorian Katie Kelly, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Brian and Mary Kelly, member of St. Jude Catholic Church. Valedictorian Sarah Elizabeth Kent, daughter of Andrew and Meg Kent, member of Christ the King Catholic Church. Valedictorian, Annabelle K. Canesco, daughter of Jason and Jody Canesco, member of Immaculate Heart of Mary Catholic Church. Valedictorian, Grace Kolovinsky, daughter of Brian and Lori Kolovinsky, member of St. Simon the Apostle Catholic Church. Valedictorian, Cassie Kronenberger, daughter of Bill and Dari Kronenberger, member of Holy Spirit, 
of Geist Catholic Church. Valedictorian Blake Lowe, son of Mr. and Mrs. Ming, and Lori Lowe, member of St. Simon the Apostle Catholic Church. Valedictorian Melissa Moore, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Gordon Moore, member of St. Lawrence Catholic Church. Valedictorian Elizabeth Marie Murphy, daughter of Nick and Jojo Murphy, member of Immaculate Heart of Mary Catholic Church. Valedictorian Anna Elizabeth Pohl, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Chris and Candace Pohl, members of St. Simon the Apostle Catholic Church. Valedictorian Jacob Schneider, son of Mr. Mike Schneider and Dr. Carmen Kujamet Schneider, members of St. Michael's of Greenfield Catholic Church. Valedictorian Nathan Shanefield, son of Eric and Beth Shanefield, member of St. Malachi Catholic Church. Valedictorian Mary Kate Temple, daughter of Dave and Victoria Temple, member of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Catholic Church. Valedictorian McKenna Carol Wylam, daughter of Steve and Jackie Wylam, members of Holy Spirit of Geist Catholic Church. And last but certainly not least, we have some history in the making here at Cathedral High School. This is our first ever international student who has been named valedictorian. John Chai, a Chinese international student, is a son of Mr. Turgong Chai and Mrs. Li Wen Wong. This concludes our list of valedictorians and salutatorians. Let's give these students a nice round of applause. Please be seated. And now it is my honor to invite up and welcome Sam Cassius and Annabelle Comesco to offer our student commencement address. Let's give them a nice warm welcome. Good afternoon. As previously mentioned, we are Sammy and Annabelle. In case you don't know us, we went to high school together. We spent four years together up on that hill, learning, laughing, and growing as a family. We personally could not be more thankful for our time spent together at dear old cathedral. Even though we question how these four years flew by so quickly, despite the fact that everyone told us they would, they are past, and we are left with the memories of our four years. Freshman year, we drove up the hill for the first time, nervous for the adventures that awaited us. We truly had no idea what we were doing. Our heads were churning with the questions, who will I sit next to during lunch? Where will I fit in? How in the world will I ever be able to navigate the winding hallways of this enormous school without walking into the wrong classroom? But somehow, we made it through that year. By sophomore year, we had learned, for the most part, where our classrooms were, but a new rotating schedule left us with that unwavering fear of walking into the wrong classroom. We were learning, but we still had a long way to go which was quite fitting, as I'm sure we've heard almost every day that year. The word sophomore actually means wise fool. <laughs> Junior year was largely dominated by stress. Stress on behalf of the counselors, who were praying we had at least thought about taking the ACT and SAT, and stress arising within ourselves, as we realized we had hit the halfway mark of our time on the hill. Just as we had begun to truly feel comfortable in our new home, just as we finally learned where to go and when, it was time to start thinking about leaving. And now, senior year has flown by far too quickly, as has our entire time at Cathedral. I'm sure that many of us can remember how nervous we were on that first drive up the hill freshman year like it was yesterday. And now, I'm sure that many of us hold a similar nervous feeling driving down that hill for one last time, realizing that it's time to move on to the next chapter of our lives. However, we need to realize something just as important. Did you realize? 
This past fall, Cathedral celebrated its 100 year anniversary. <laughs> achievement. 100 years. 100 years of excellence in academics. 100 years of tradition. 100 years of dear old cathedral. It's certainly reason for celebration, but at the same time, the thought can be a bit daunting. After all, we are only one class in the 98 who came before us, in the 100 years of rich history that preceded our time. That's a lot to live up to. What differentiates us, makes us stand out? What is our legacy? What made those four years count? Are we simply the class who first donned the dark blue lanyard? Well, to answer this, I would, like to, I would like us to think back to our particular assembly. Not one with spirit sticks or ventriloquists, but rather one that took place before we even came to cathedral. I'm talking about the one at the open house, our eighth grade year, when we were all preparing to start our journey here at Cathedral. I remember listening to Mr. Emery speak, and as he described our family up on the hill, one line in particular stood out to me. He said, the best friend you will make here at Cathedral will, without fail, live on the opposite side of town as you. <laughs> well, speaking from personal experience, he was right. And now, four years later, as we prepare to start a new journey, those best friends may live on the opposite side of the country as you. However, our parting ways is by no means an end. One of my favorite aspects of Cathedral is our idea of lifelong connections. The idea that we will carry on the bonds that we formed up on that hill throughout our entire lives. A similar sentiment is expressed in Alfred Tennyson's poem, Ulysses, part of which reads, I am a part of all that I have met, yet all experience is an arch where through gleams that untraveled world whose margin fades forever and ever when I move. That's an interesting thought. We are a part of all that we have met. We impact each and every person we meet. We change them, and they change us. As we prepare to move into the next phase of our lives, just through that arch, we have to remember that we do not do so alone. We are now all a part of one another, so when asking what our legacy is, it becomes clear that the legacy we leave is not just at Cathedral. It is carried on in each and every one of us and in everything we have done for one another. Our legacy is one of family, of love. And as we sang so many times, that love will hold us together, both now and forever. The last line in the poem Ulysses states, to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. And has Cathedral taught us anything less? As we sit here in the caps and gowns we thought we would never put on, I challenge you to put into use the countless blessings Cathedral has given us over these past four beautiful years. Dear Old Cathedral has taught us to desire our own unique greatness, no matter what that might be. To be relentlessly curious and unyielding in our quest for knowledge. To form our own opinions about the world around us, despite the ease in lying within the norm. To put others before ourselves, and most importantly, to always, always be kind. We truly are lucky to have such an incredible family here at Cathedral, one that challenges us to grow in all aspects of our lives, and one which we will carry on forever. For as we go forth, we carry with us the memories, the laughs, the smiles, and the spirit we have gifted one another. This is our lifelong connection, our legacy, a legacy unlike any other in the past 100 years of Cathedral. We cannot thank each and every one of you enough, for all of you are a part of us and have made us who we are today. Whether you cheered with us at a homecoming game, acted with me on stage, said hi to us in the hallway, or were that best friend 
all the way across town. You have all changed us, and we cannot wait to carry the class of 2019 with us into that gleaming, untraveled world. Congratulations. We love you all. It is my pleasure to introduce the 2019 senior class speaker. Mr. Howard Fogel graduated from Illinois State and Purdue University. He gained his principal of teaching license this past year from the University of Indianapolis. Although sometimes you may not be able to see him in the halls, <laughs> Mr. Howard Fogel's exemplary work in the philanthropy team chemistry classroom and sports fields do not go unnoticed. Mr. Howard Fogel taught chemistry, taught chemistry to my mother at Purdue University before moving to Cathedral in 2003. Mr. Fogel has embodied what is meant to be part of the Cathedral family. Coach Fogel is currently coaching his 50th sport team that has ranged from football to wrestling to boys and girls lacrosse. Mr. Fogel runs the student raffle at Cathedral and has raised over $1.5 million doing so. He has been on numerous mission trips and retreats and is the head of the planter team at Cathedral. On top of juggling all that, Mr. Fogel teaches chemistry in the history hallway and is the second most eligible bachelor at Cathedral. <laughs> Behind Mr. Miller, who Mr. Fogel claims is taller and funnier than I am. <laughs> I believe the class of 2019 picked Mr. Fogel for the following reasons. Mr. Fogel is open, honest, and caring to all students at Cathedral. Mr. Fogel always has a shining face in the hallway and looks to make you happier every day. Mr. Fogel is compassionate and brave, and Mr. Fogel has a heart bigger than anyone else at Cathedral. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Howard Fogel. Can you see me? <laughs> Chairman Cohen, President Bridges, Principal Orland, honored guests, and graduates. I'm very grateful to the Cathedral Irish class of 2019 for affording me the opportunity to be, of being the last teacher to address you today. I hope my election was not influenced by my Russian family roots or <laughs> or growing up I was part of the Chicago Democratic Machine family. And for the record, there was no collusion between our football program and the girls lacrosse team, and it's just a coincidence that Bo and Charlie took Megan Victoria to prom. <laughs> Here we are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the founding of Indianapolis' first Catholic high school, built on the values of the Brothers of Holy Cross, dedicated to our patron Saint Mary, and you chose a Jewish teacher to speak to today. Really? <laughs> parents and grandparents. Thank you for trusting us with your children and with your children's children. There are so many legacy families in this room. Thank you for wanting your children to have a faith-based education. To our families celebrating with us for the first time, as Father John said to us in his final homily to us, keep your fork. The best is yet to come. At Cathedral, we love to use the word family because family is the friends you hang out with, and the teachers and staff who treat you as you truly are their children. It's your teammates, your classmates, the alum who come before you, and the students that will wear the blue and gold for the next 100 years. It's your parents, and it's your friends' parents who take care of you when your parents aren't around. For me, Cathedral family is Noah Barth, 
running on the field alongside his defensive coordinator dad, Adam. Incidentally, happy birthday, Noah. It's Mr. Tim White watching his daughter, Mary Ann, guide her girls lacrosse team. And it's Elijah Land following the sidelines behind his father, Coach Dustin. And it's John O'Hara's daughter, Lucy, being carried through the hallways by the track and field seniors. I remember back to 2003 when my own then seven-year-old son, Brandon, played in the bleachers with a seven-year-old Jenna Masterson. And 11 years later, the two were in the same retreat group. Divine Providence is pretty cool. In order to understand our family, you need to understand that we've been formed by the actions of everyone who has ever taught, coached, mentored, and learned at Cathedral. And it's critical to know that we've been shaped by our celebrations and by our grief. In 2005, one of our football players, Jeremy Schmidt, passed away on our football field. Shortly after we received word that Jeremy had died, the coaches gathered together to decide how we would tell the players the news. For me, one voice stood above all the others. Jim McLean gathered us, and he told us, we're going to call all the families. We're going to gather together. We're going to talk to the players. We're going to hug them. We're going to hold them, and we're going to tell them that we love them. We're going to call all the parents, and they stay with us until they get picked up. We cried with those boys. We prayed with those boys. We cared for those boys. We were family. Mr. McLean, Jim, you saved my life that day. You saved our coaches that day. And you saved our boys that day. But you have saved thousands of lives during your time here. Thank you for all you have done for me and all you have done for Cathedral. I hope you enjoy your retirement, but please don't go too far. I need you. We need you. The world in which we live in is changing. As a high school student, my community was challenged by some individuals who believed that we, the Jews, didn't belong. What I learned as a young Jewish man is that the haters can take anything away from you but the knowledge that's in your head. There are so many teachers seated behind me that taught from their hearts. And those lessons truly change lives. And it's critical that you continue to learn. The standard of excellence at Cathedral is always rising, as it should. But in addition to prodding the future, you draw from the past. And in so many ways, you are old school Cathedral because you fearlessly unite around each other and you protect everyone in this Irish clan. We protected our classmates by supporting Breezy's Bunch and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Two of your efforts were awarded as Students of the Year for your help. You have demonstrated your commitment to an option for the poor and the quality of service that you have done. You have built a home for Habitat for Humanity, Dance for Riley's Hospital, collected cereal for Day Spring Center, ministered to children in Peru, and many of you are traveling this summer to Tanzania to experience a people in a place that will transform you. I know. I saw my own son and his Brandon and his mother Stephanie transformed by that trip and by the teacher that took them on that trip. You've experienced athletic excellence and this year has been an incredible journey as we watched our girls soccer team win their third state championship while our cross country runners set records and showed us the value of teamwork as they took second in the state while crowning a state and a national individual champion. Our hockey team championship celebration is second to none. And the back-to-back -back state championships of our wrestling team is bested only by the respect that they show for the sport. There are so many individual state champions in this class, but your actions made your teammates better. The hope our musicians, singers, actors, and crews inspire remind us to remember how lucky we are. And I see that every time you share your talents with us on stage, at a concert, and a during mass. But the way our theater department accepts, accepts newcomers to their productions is an example the whole school can follow. Because as Dr. Seuss reminds us, a person's a person no matter how small. Six members of this class are incredible examples of how hearts and minds are educated when they were named National Merit Semi-Finalists. And your faith. The very core reason for Cathedral to exist runs through our hallways, and our senior retreats make that faith journey even stronger. It was a gift to be able to speak with you, and I am forever changed by the love and compa compassion I witnessed with Group 5 on Retreats 2 and 6. I don't know if the lessons we shared on Retreat have truly sunk in yet, but I do know at the time and in the moment, those thoughts and actions were pure, and they were genuine. I hope that you will continue to use those lessons 
to make a difference in the lives of all the people you encounter in your life. And remember what we said on retreat. The devil said to me, you better prepare, there's a storm coming. And I replied to the devil, I am the storm. My challenge to you as you end this part of your cathedral journey is to always find a way to be the storm. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, Dr. King told us. If you see injustice, rise up and be the storm for justice. If you can't feed 100 people, Mother Teresa showed us, then feed just one. Be the storm. We must always take sides, Elie Wiesel tells us, because silence encourages the tormentor. If you see someone hanging out on the sidelines, wanting to stay out of something that's going to be messy and hard, and maybe even unpopular, be the storm. What's messy and unpopular is also not the easy thing to do. The lessons that I learned from the beautiful life and legacy of our beloved Cassie Braun is if you want to be a citizen of the world, you need to live in that world. So go out, learn more, serve more, grow. But remember, when Cathedral calls, when Mama calls, you come home. I hope you develop the wisdom to lead, the confidence to see, the courage to act, and most importantly, the compassion to inspire. One last favor. Please hold hands. Seniors, please hold hands. You guys like to say it. We came as many, but we leave as one, with one heartbeat. And I'll leave you with the final message that I left you on senior retreat. I'm just one person. All these people behind me have the same feelings that I have. And that message is real simple. We love you. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hands.
time in our commencement ceremony, we would like to acknowledge those seniors who have received scholarship honors. In your program, you will find a listing of those seniors who have received these special awards. Several scholarships were still pending at the time of printing and therefore could not be included in the program. I would now ask that those seniors who have received scholarships be acknowledged by our applause. Before we continue with the conferring of diplomas, on behalf of the class of 24, 2019, we would like to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of our college advisors, who have spent many dedicated hours with our soon-to-be graduates. Would Mrs. Kathy Pavanka, Mrs. Ann Katz, and Mr. Terry Knaus please step forward so you can be recognized, please. We are very pleased to have with us today Mr. Kyle McGrath, a 2001 Cathedral graduate. He is the Alumni Association Board President and a member of the Cathedral Board of Trustees. As the graduates exit the stage, Mr. McGrath will welcome the new alumni and give each graduate an Alumni Association pin. Graduates, please put this pin inside your graduation folder so as to keep it safe. Thank you, Mr. McGrath and the Alumni Association for being a part of our ceremony today. It is now time for that most important part in our ceremony in which we will recognize the graduates of the class of 2019. As each student's name is called, we would ask that his or her parents stand and be recognized as well. As Cathedral High School's graduation ceremony is a very dignified and respected celebration, we ask that you please hold your applause until the last graduate has walked off the stage. Because of this courtesy, you will be ensured that you, the parents and families, will be able to hear your graduate recognized. Again, as this is a very dignified and respected celebration, we ask that you keep your applause until all names have been called. So we will now begin with the conferring of the pens. Luke Christopher Adams. Woo! Corey William Oryx. Catherine Georgeon Alvin. Jane Christina Alexander. Isabel Mariana Ali. Giancarlo Vincenzo Barker. Maya Danielle Baby. Joseph Michael Bell. Eva Renee Belot. Colin Michael Berry. Connor Thomas Berry. Mitchell Jeffrey Bertrand. Lily Evelyn Bettner. Matthew Kennelly Bigelow. Phoebe Claire Buckingham. <laughs> 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 
Nora Rose Boyle. Charles Connolly Brady. Again, I would ask that you please hold your applause. Please keep comments to yourself. Grace McKenzie Brinton. Blake Lawrence Bridges. Caroline Carter Brown. Jalen Giles Buford. Taylor Lauren Bullock. Joseph Pates Berger. Christian Anthony Bussman. Carson, excuse me, Samuel Joseph Butler. Carson Anthony Carter. Sean Robert Callahan. Mary Benning Claire Kim. Francie Sabrina Cardenas. Diana Del Carmen Cardoza Lanzano. Catherine Marie Carr. Lucas James Carrico. Olivia Lauren Carrico. Luke Peter Serrar. Cameron Renee Serafin. Wan Ming Chai. William Alexander Chapman. Marita Kate Christopher. Chandre Keyshawn Sissel. Grant Briarton Clark. <laughs> Malcolm Alexander Clark. Harold William Clevenger. Dorian Akil Collins. John Keegan Conato. <laughs> William Ryan Copeland. Thomas Anthony Cortese. Mackenzie Ann Cox. Chloe Isabella Cremel. Sydney Elizabeth Cripps. Abigail Kathleen Dalton. Elizabeth Rose Davis. 
Andrew James Darling. Kevin Jackson Darrington. Evan William Davis. Evan Michael Dunn. Joseph Michael Day. Tim Michael DeBoer. Michaela Love Dickwitzel. Timothy William Douglas. Emma Eileen Doyle. Nicholas Stephen Graves. Tanner Franklin Dunwood. Ferris Falou. Emma Marie Faulkner. Joseph Finnell. Alec Klein Flynn. Armand Khalil Franklin. James Krishan Franklin. Susan Margaret Garcia, Jennifer Gadira Garza, Zachary Aaron Gall, James Caleb Gillick, Malcolm Christopher Goggins, Stuart Asher Gomez. Joseph Brooks Radisson. Jacob Daniel Graff. Jalen Walter Grant. Nathaniel Wilson Griffin. Noah William Gruber. James Dean Grund. Grace Olivia Gumena. John Joseph Haas. Richard Morgan Haggerty IV. Peter Mills Haggerty. Joshua Arthur Hall. Matthew Kyle Hankins, Ryland Arnell Harvey, Samuel William Hasselby, Derek James Hasselby, Sydney Nicole Hastings Smith, Nandi Shunan Hawkins, Connor James Hellman, Jenna Marie Hellman, Lauren Elizabeth Hellman. Justin Robert Hensley. Cole Davidge Hopper. Joshua David Heft. C. 
Sarah Ashley Hoffman, Kristen May Holman, Laurel Dove Hotchkiss, Emma Victoria Huff, Gregory Niles Huntington, Brendan Shikara Hurley, John Christian Hutchins, <laughs> Sam Wesley Hutchison, Morgan May Irving. Lily Catherine Jennings, Colvin James Johnson, Emma Elizabeth Johnson, Zion Matil Johnson, Samuel Alexander Cassius. Jacob David Collin, Blake Kenneth Kaufman, Mary Catherine Kelly, Kayla Renee Kendall, Sarah Elizabeth Kent, Claire Margaret Kinder, Maya Ayana King, Kyle Robert Place, Kyle Robert Pfluger, Jacob Tyson Kobsa. Alexander Michael Flores, Nicholas Stephen Colasso, Annabelle May Canesco, Claire Ann Kochelski. <laughs> Grace Rose Kowalski, Richard Michael Kroluski, Cassandra Ann Kronenberger, Trevor Donald Kunkel, Isabel Unha Kwan. Alan Gregory Langdon, Joshua James Lay, Madeline Marie Lee, John Herbert Ruffle IV, Ian Jeffrey Foster Layman, Rachel Nicole Layton. Quinn Killian Leas, Angelica Grace Fletcher, yes, Stephanie Michelle Lewis, Grace and Elizabeth Link, Kaylee Lynn Lofton. Blake Oliver Lowe, Courtney Kai Lucas, Cecilia Ann Lucia, 
Yonglin Luo, Montiasha Raysun Macklin, Henry Arthur Jacob Madden, Timothy Kim McGinn, James Robert Maher, Magnus Lachlan Mukherin, Alexander James Maley, Sydney Catherine Manley, Anna Grace Marcoux, Dalton Gregory Martin, Nassim Sincere Martin, Nicole Grace Mason, Lucas Charles Mattingly, Cameron Lynn Mazur, Kiernan Andrew McCormick, Dayla Brooke McCoy, Madison Marie McDaniel, Deshan Anea McGibney, Meg Riley McGinley, Allie Judith McHugh, Miranda Elizabeth McKamey, Madison Christine McKinney, Michael David McNulty,
Rodney LaShawn O'Neill. Zoe Jane Oates. Leonardo Andres Ocampo Morales. Camille Montgomery Odell. Judah Aaron Officer. Alexa Jo Marie Villacasta Antonico. Emma May Kathleen Orchid. Morgan Elizabeth Orr. Caroline Christy Osler. Jordan Lee Elsley. Peyton 
Adam Schofield. Jacob Vernon Schomer.
McKenna Carol Wylam. Sydney Catherine Young. Yes! one of our very special guests today. In a moment, Mrs. Joe Cavanaugh will be receiving an honorary diploma from Cathedral High School. Joe started teaching theology, back when it was still called religion, in 1977. The same year, Cathedral moved to its current location on the hill and went co-ed. She retired in 2012 after an incredible 35 years of educating hearts and minds. That translates into having taught approximately 6,000 students over the years. And in 1981, I was privileged to be one of them. Honestly, I don't remember anymore what exactly she taught from day to day, but I will never forget how it felt to be a part of her class. Welcomed, accepted, and unconditionally loved every time I stepped foot in her classroom or we struck up a conversation in the hall. But Joe has not only left an incredible mark on me, she has done so on Cathedral as well. She single-handedly started the senior retreat in the 1979-80 school year, and later went on to help start the freshman, sophomore, and junior retreats as well. She was our first director of campus ministry. She had a long run as the head of the theology department. She was a sophomore class moderator for years and was responsible for starting the sophomore class ring ceremony and mass. She was also the student council moderator for a time, during which she had a hand in creating such events as Winterfest, the annual blood drive, and the Irish 500. Joe, is there anything you didn't do while you were here? Graduates. Although Mrs. Kavanaugh was no longer teaching by the time you started your cathedral careers, no doubt some of your older siblings were taught by her. And I dare say, many of your parents here today had her as a teacher as well. I know you will look back on your cathedral days if you haven't started to do so already and have a special place in your heart for that one teacher who really understood you, with whom you connected on a deeper level. For me, that teacher was Mrs. Kavanaugh, or Mrs. C, as we used to call her. I've heard the expression that faith isn't taught, it's caught, which is another way to divine zeal. And Jo is the epitome of zeal, as she has a way of bringing out your faith in you, a faith you never even knew you had, and makes you yearn for more. And although I've only been teaching for theology for some four years now, I imagine that's just about the highest accolade anyone could possibly give a theology teacher. Joe, you've touched the lives of so many, and you continue to be a joy-filled role model, mentor, and servant leader to all with whom you come in contact. In short, I can't think of a more deserving person than you to receive this honor, but I will admit I'm a bit biased. Congratulations.
And now, here is Mrs. Kathy McCullough, Director of Bands, to introduce our next honorary diploma recipient. Good afternoon. I have the great honor of introducing Dr. Tom Greer as he receives his honorary diploma from Cathedral. Most of us sitting here today have been motivated, encouraged, mentored, pushed, and cheered on by Dr. Tom Greer. For 30 years, he has been Cathedral's ever-present administrator. I could not get to school early enough to arrive before him. I could not leave school late enough to go home after him. Countless freshmen over the years have been astonished when he greeted them by name in the hallways during their first few weeks of school. Countless teachers have been amazed to see Tom in the basement, then at the football field, then in their classroom, then in the cafeteria, all within the same 15 minutes. <laughs> How can he do that? How can he be everywhere at the same time? The explanation that there are four of him seems a bit unlikely. Tom gets around the, ca the cathedral campus so much that rather than showing 10,000 steps a day, his Fitbit says, check engine. <laughs> Most likely, he has just been the type of person that knows where he is needed, and like a true servant leader, he just makes it happen. Tom believes that all children deserve to be surrounded by adults that believe in them and their capacity for achievement. Tom's goals were to make sure that you all down here, the students, were number one to all of us. His modeling of service goes well beyond the norm. Tom gives money out of his own pocket for students that need lunch. He travels on mission trips. He performs in our school's musicals. He cheers at sorry, varsity, JV, and freshman sports events. He cheerfully carries a heavy tuba at homecoming halftime, calls bingo games, parks cars, and organizes behind-the-scenes events for school fundraisers. When a cathedral student, teacher, or parent needs someone to talk to, Tom makes you feel like your problem is his problem, and together you can figure anything out. In this room, there are collectively thousands of memories of Dr. Tom Greer. One of my favorites is from 2008, when he helped chaperone a band trip to Ireland and was one of four adults marching with the band in the Dublin St. Patrick's State Parade. The joy on his face when waving at and talking with the children and adults along the parade route while representing dear old cathedral is something I'll never forget. The joy on his face, students, that you see every day from him in assemblies, in the classroom, in the hallway, at sports events, in the concerts, and everywhere. Tom believes the family is everything, whether it is his own family or the cathedral family. Maureen, thank you for lending him to our family for 30 years. We have been truly blessed. After next week, being a cathedral will never quite be the same for any of us. However, like a quote from one of Dr. Greer's favorite musicals, Children of Eden, you cannot close your heart to what it fears and needs to know. That the hardest part of love, and the rarest part of love, and the truest part of love, is letting go. We are letting go of you now, Tom. But we all love you, and you will always be a part of our cathedral family. Dr. Greer.
Each year, the president has the privilege to announce the scholarship totals for the graduating class. Last year, class of 2018 earned a record $55,296,387, breaking the previous record. And so this class had the work cut out for them. But I'm pleased to announce that the class of 2019 has exceeded that amount and has earned a scholarship offer in total of $57,653,812. And class of 2019 and, more importantly, your parents. Uh, this is a new record, not only by total, but by average per student. So great job. Way to go, 2019. It is a specific purpose of a Catholic school, as we heard earlier, to graduate students that are able to go out and be excellent citizens of this world, and more importantly, to become citizens of the world yet to come. How do you do that? It's pretty simple. You follow what Jesus told us. You heard in today's gospel a great commandment. It was not a great suggestion, by the way, to love one another, just as he loves us and God loves us. So you heard Annabelle say it. You heard Mr. Fogel say it. I think you know it. You are all loved. And so what you do now is go forward from here and love one another. So please keep that in mind. It'll take you far, far beyond even the scholarship dollars that we just announced. Okay, it is about that time, class of 2019. We're going to call up your class president, Connor Hellman, for the turning of the tassel. Connor? Are you ready? By the power vested in me by the Cathedral Board of Trustees and the state of Indiana, I now pronounce you graduates of Cathedral High School. Please. Thank you. 